Hello there and welcome to In My Opinion 4, Godzilla for the PS4. After the original Godzilla attacked Japan and was driven back to the sea, Japan discovered the form of energy that became a brand new fuel source to help humanity known as G-Energy. They also formed G-Force to take down Godzilla or any threat like him. Years later, Godzilla returns and while no one is sure if it's the same Godzilla or a new one, the fact remains that he is back and ready to eat, with his eyes set on the G-Energy reactors. So it's your job as Godzilla to destroy these reactors and anyone that gets in your way. The story here is not super deep if that's what you're looking for, but it works for what it is. Which is basically the government freaking out and trying to stop Godzilla from fucking up everything, and thinking maybe depending on G-Energy wasn't the best idea. I was entertained by some of the dialogue, especially the different takes each government official had on the situation. This is an action game kind of mixed with a fighter, though it would be easier to just call it a Godzilla simulator. You walk around smashing basically everything in your path and fight other kaiju. How you turn is with the L1 and R1 buttons and you also have a standard attack, heavy attack, grab, and special attack, which shoots out whatever special the kaiju you picked has. There is a meter on the lower left corner that shows you when you can perform your special, and after it's used you have to wait till it fills up again automatically. There are more powerful specials you can do by roaring first, but this leaves you open a little more for attack which can interrupt your move. While moves and combos are pretty similar throughout the cast, there is a command list if you want to check that out just in case. You also can dash, jump, and even fly with certain kaiju, and if you're feeling a bit cornered by attacks, you do have a pushback move you can perform to give you some space, but this does cost you one special bar. The gameplay itself is actually really fun if you ever wanted to play a game where you felt like you were Godzilla or the other kaiju. The controls do feel a bit odd at first, mainly the L1 and R1 thing, but you'll quickly become used to it. I heard some complaints that the characters felt too slow and to me that's more of a positive. As it's trying to go for a Godzilla experience and if you have seen most of the movies, the majority of the time the kaijus are not super speedy. It's also not so slow that it feels like it takes a million years to get around, especially since the game has a dash attack you can do to give your character a quick burst of speed, or depending on the kaiju you can just fly around. When you gotta do one on one combat with another kaiju it doesn't feel that bad, in fact it feels kinda epic especially when you hit them into some buildings. The game has an auto lock on system that triggers when you start to get close to your enemy, letting you have a good idea where they are, and this helps you land some hits. If you want to stop the lock on, all you have to do is turn around and start walking away. You may think you don't have health as there's no meter for you and you can take a good amount of hits, but you do indeed have health and the screen gets stained when you're dying. To regain some health all you need to do is not get hit as your health regenerates. I will say the only annoying thing is dealing with certain flying enemies from the G-Force army, since certain kaiju are not well equipped to handle these little flies, so it becomes a pain if you're trying to kill them. Besides that, it just feels really good walking around smashing, blasting, and watching everything crumble around you. Now you will be doing this across different modes which I will touch on now. First we are looking at the God of Destruction mode which itself has 3 different modes in it, Go Ashore, Invade, and Defend. Go Ashore is the main story mode of the game and where you play as Godzilla and the main goal is to destroy all the reactors. As you're smashing through everything you gain G-Cells which help you grow big and strong which can be shown through your height percentage. The game also gives you side objectives in each area like destroy X amount of tanks which can also give you a boost in G-Cells. And you also get an extra amount of cells if you have a high fury combo going. At first I thought it was just BS wording when they said you actually grow, but when you go back to redo this mode you can actually tell the difference in size, and it's actually pretty cool to watch giant monsters grow even more big. You might have noticed a destruction rate percentage and disaster level meter. Destruction rate lets you know if you really smash just about everything on the map, and getting this to 100% lets you unlock said map for a diorama mode, and once you 100% a certain map you don't need to 100% it again which is great. The disaster level starts to go up as you blow everything to hell, and once it levels up, the cavalry is called, and stuff like jets and laser tanks show up to put some hurting on you. Now you must be thinking, well if this is anything like the movies they won't do dick to me. Well you're right and wrong. Right in the sense they won't cause mega damage, but wrong in the sense that they won't be a problem. As these guys do have a chance of stunning you, and depending on the situation that could be an issue such as when fighting other kaiju. Yeah there is a chance of you running into another kaiju, or maybe two, and having to take it down. The opponent or opponents will have their own height percentages, though if you've been gathering cells like you're supposed to you should be good, but for some reason there are random times that their height can be at 100% when you were not able to gather the cells you needed, making for some frustrating fights. And it's not like you get anything more for defeating these harder forms. Though the good thing is if you lose you don't start the whole mode over and instead you just start the area again. 
and the game will even lower the monster's height percentage. When you kill a kaiju, you get its cell, which I will discuss later what's that for. When you get past the first area, you will be brought into a grid-like map, which lets you choose the path you want to head in. Certain paths contain certain kaiju to fight, but most importantly lets you know what difficulty the area will be on. What changes in the difficulty is how fast your disaster meter rises, meaning more reinforcements. You will sometimes have to destroy the reactors in a certain time limit, but don't worry if a kaiju shows up as you can still destroy the reactor with them around and even still fight them after, as the area won't end like usual when you destroy all the reactors. And lastly, the leaders will change. The leaders thing is kind of a nice touch, since if you choose the easy route, their dialogue will be along the lines of, we should try to come to an understanding with Godzilla, and maybe he will learn to be peaceful and so on. So him not raising the disaster meter super fast makes sense. You may have noticed me taking some sweet pictures during gameplay, and this is pretty important since this is needed to see the true ending of the game. Some of the areas are locked off, and that's because you need some data on Godzilla to unlock them, which is done with pictures you take in each area with each area having four of them. All you need to do is stand in a certain spot and hold the button and voila, data collected. This may sound like a headache, but it's really not, since the game lets you know where exactly you must stand for the picture, which is by the giant red dots on the minimap and you can check what pictures you're missing in the data entry menus. Once you reach 100% in data collecting and have Godzilla at 100 meters in height, you will get your ending. Now the invade and defend mode is basically the same as go ashore mode, just with a tiny difference. In invade, you're allowed to go through the same grid path as go ashore, but this time as a different kaiju than Godzilla. So you want to be destroyer or King Ghidra, you can. And defend, you're actually, well, defending the areas from other kaiju. So your goal is to make sure the destruction rate does not drop below 50% while you're fighting. And instead of collecting G-cells, you just grow as you go along choosing your path. I like the fact the game lets you use other kaiju in these modes, as it would have been a big cock tea to see all these other kaijus as just AI, which is what happened with the PS3 version of this game. It was also a nice touch that the good guy kaiju can only be used for defend, and the usual destructive ones can only be used for invade, so you won't be using Matara to invade Japan. You also don't have to worry about having to play through any of these modes straight, as if you stop, you can easily continue where you left off as the game saves your progress. King of Kaiju mode is where you can take on any of the 21 Kaiju in 6 one-on-one fights. So yeah, this is basically the game's version of Arcade mode, and after the final fight, you get some cells for the character you're using and another random one. There's versus mode where you can take on random people or friends online, and it's functional, and I didn't notice any lag during my fights. Though this game just doesn't make a good competitive fighting game, as it feels rather unbalanced and it's best when playing solo against the AI. But hey, at least this mode exists for those wanting to try it out. Be warned though, there aren't many people online as I ran to the same guy a lot. Also, there is no local versus if you want to play with a friend next to you. Evolution mode is the reason you've been collecting all those cells throughout the game. Using said cells help upgrade the kaiju which is mainly increasing their super gauge and how fast it fills, which trust me makes a difference. The game tells you what cells you need to collect for each upgrade. You also need evolution energy which can only be gained from the modes in God of Destruction mode when you finish it with said character. Most importantly, this is where you unlock all the other characters. Yeah, you only start with Godzilla unlocked at the start and have to unlock everyone else. I know it sounds painful, but it's rather easy as to get the cell to unlock them, you just have to face them and win during any other modes in God of Destruction. So unlocking everyone is pretty fast, and the only one you really need to look up on how to get is Jet Jaguar, as he's rather tricky to unlock. The last two things to look at is Diorama Mode and Kaiju Guide. In Diorama Mode, you can make your very own diorama using kaiju figures you unlock from Evolution Mode and areas you unlock by getting 100% destruction and going in Ashore Mode. You can place the figures in multiple spots in different poses and take and save some pictures and even customize a photo shoot, like making it black and white. This is a nice little addition for those who are into this sort of thing. The Kaiju Guide gives you some background info on kaiju that showed up in Godzilla flicks and even shows what movies they have been in, which made for a fun little read. I do wish there were a bit more single player modes like some sort of challenge mode to mix things up a bit instead of go ashore in two different takes. Okay, when it comes to the areas themselves, they don't look super detailed all that great. I would say they are okay to decent models, though I do like how they explode and break apart adding to the chaos of the kaiju attacking. There was also a little easter egg in one of the areas where one of the buildings is the Godzilla hotel they have in Japan, which was kinda cute. Now on to the most important thing, the character models for our kaiju. And I have to say they did a great job with these as they are nicely detailed and even get a neat little cutscene when you run into them in a fight. What also adds to the immersion is the sound of the game as we get all the roars and beam sounds you expect to come out of these kaiju, and even the sounds of the dying 
army guys are added. The music in general is very Godzilla as some is taken straight from the source and we even get that upbeat music when the reinforcements come in. What voice acting we do get is also pretty good which is a surprise since I was expecting some really bad dubbing. If you want to hear it in Japanese you're allowed to switch to it. Throughout my playtime I did not run into any bugs or visual weirdness and when it comes to frame rate the game would chug a tiny bit when things got a little too chaotic. Like when three kaiju are fighting at once with a bunch of buildings being blown up and beams being shot. To reach the upper atmosphere and cause a cataclysmic event of global proportions. The released highly concentrated G energy will disperse over the entire planet, damaging nature and people to an immeasurable degree. We must do everything in our power to prevent this occurrence, but what can we actually do to stop it? This ended up being a fun game, letting you feel like a kaiju as you destroy buildings and battle other kaiju in your way. Then you have the character design, speed, and sound that are true to the source material that makes you feel like you're in the world of Godzilla. Though this can work against it, since if you're not a fan or don't have an interest in Godzilla, the slower gameplay can turn you off, and as I mentioned, the areas themselves don't really look that great. When it comes to replay value, it's mainly going through the Gods of Destruction mode with different kaiju to raise their power and collect figures. And there's online fights, but as I mentioned, this isn't really a good competitive game. Another problem is the game is no longer on the PlayStation Store, and a physical copy is pretty damn expensive, so it could be a pain to get a hold of. At the end of the day, if you can look past some of its flaws, are a Godzilla fan, and can snag a copy for a reasonable price, then I recommend this title, as I feel it's worthy of a Godzilla roar. Just be sure to get the PS4 version. I hope you enjoy my thoughts on this game, and for gamer's sake, keep gaming.